All right. I think we're live. Let, <laughs> let me check uh, real quick on the on Facebook to see if I can share the link. Okay. Yep. All right. We are live. Um, all right. So welcome to the Those That Inspire podcast uh, slash live stream for today. Um, I want to welcome uh, Savannah to and also known as the Savvy Traveler. <laughs> 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 so Savannah and I have known each other through Instagram for about two years now, but we only recently met in person in Las Vegas. And I've just always been inspired by you. I got really excited when I saw your year in review, year in review video, probably about a year and a year ago. And I was like, I have to make one of those myself. <laughs> and it was pretty cool to see like you run around the world and have fun, but you're also doing some really awesome things with your life. Um, so I'll just let you introduce yourself and who you are. So I'm Savannah, uh, I'm a the Savvy Traveler, as you said. I am 25. I live in Utah right now. Um, uh, I'm from Florida. That's where I grew up. And I grew up traveling the world with my dad. He's a pilot. Came out to Utah when I joined the Air Force. And I've been here for six years and started my Instagram about two years ago. Um, and just kind of been going down a path of aviation and photography, videography, and trying to combine the two and find ways to feed all of my passions um, equally, which is a struggle sometimes, but happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> happy that well, we thank you for... in Vegas. That was really cool. We, we did. That was pretty fun. Um, I've been trying to tell people to use Instagram and social media in, in a way I think is better because I think that it's not just about all the pretty pictures and things online. It's about yeah. connecting with people in person. And when we, actually, when we actually met, it was like pretty cool. Like we kind of yeah. already knew each other. You're like, oh my gosh, I have this friend from some random place. <laughs> like, <laughs> I trust already. So you have this common ground. But yeah, I totally agree. Instagram is way more than just the superficial um, site of it. It goes way deeper. And I wish more people utilize that because I don't think they think they can. But that's what I like it best for. Yeah. And like, there's been so many things in my life that have happened and they wouldn't be possible without social media. So it's been really great. Um, like Nomad Cruise and even like my cruise that I did in Croatia, um, right. was, a lot of it was people I met through social media. So it was exactly. pretty cool. Yeah. And you put yourself in a room with people that are like-minded and stuff. It makes for uh, a lot of magic really good time. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, so I just want to like get have people get a more in a sense of who you are. Sorry, I'm still getting used to this whole being on camera thing, but I'm working on it. <laughs> good practice. <laughs> Definitely good practice. So I get you said you grew up around aviation um, and you're now a pilot, right? So yeah. tell me about how that came about and like what your life has been around being a pilot. Um, so I grew up, my dad flies for United. He flew F-16s for the Air Force prior to that. So I always grew up flying with him and he really wanted me to be a pilot and I absolutely refused I actually hated flying I didn't want any part of it at all and my brother got his pilot's license and he joined the air force and I was just kind of doing my own thing because I didn't want to be told what to do um, mm -hmm. but then I just kind of realized maybe I'm not doing this because I'm just being told I should do it and let me like reevaluate and see if this is something I actually would like to do so I did a flight and I was hooked ever since. And I think, I think a lot of kids growing up around parents' influences, they really like butt heads against what their parents force them to do. Um, but they really have to find a love for it themselves if they're going to be successful in it. And so I've absolutely right. loved it since then. And I've been able to connect with my dad over it since then. So. Very cool. Um, yeah. I kind of like that. We just said where you're saying that you didn't want to do it, but then you gave it a try. And you didn't even yeah. know until you tried it, right? So, right. I could have just been like, oh, I hate flying. Flying's the worst, and like not be where I am today, like with this passion that I absolutely love. Right. So that's awesome. I think that's a, a great inspirational thing for other people to be like, well, why not go give something a try and see if you like it? And obviously, you can go back to whatever you were doing, or maybe you don't like yeah. what you tried, but. At least you kind of dabble in different things and say, oh, well, this whole thing that obviously for you was aviation and it changed your whole life, right? Yeah, I think a lot of people fear like the unknown. They're like, well, maybe I won't be good enough. It'll be too hard. 
um, I'll embarrass myself, but everyone does that. Everyone embarrasses themselves. People are more concerned about themselves than what you're doing. So if you want to do something, <laughs> to try. It's okay. <laughs> yep. And I think that's an interesting point is I, well, obviously you share a lot of information on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that. And how did you get so confident uh, being in front of the camera and sharing your life and things like that? Um, I think going back to when I was younger, how we always go on trips and I had a camera and I wanted to document it. So I take pictures and growing up, uh, my family is really into performing. So we just love the arts and being on stage and creating. And that just kind of translated into me wanting to share my travels through a platform and kind of be a voice for it. And I think I was pretty shy. I was really shy growing up. It was really hard for me to make friends. Um, in high school, I was pretty awkward and I would eat lunch by myself in the library and I just, <laughs> I just had a hard time fitting in. But having this platform actually helped me kind of find my niche and kind of bloom. Um, and I see a lot of downsides, obviously, to social media, but I think you can use it for really positive ways. And it's helped me come out of my shell and it's helped me help other people come out of their shells and just kind of share and create and connect. And I just love being able to be on camera and I think people like seeing a face to what people are doing and saying oh this person is just like me like I'm weird too but I can do it they are doing it so I just love that connectivity of it yeah I think that's a really good point is that I've actually on my Instagram stories and stuff for the last couple of years I have not put myself on camera very much I mostly just share like my experiences of what I'm doing mm -hmm. but the people when I look at it the people that are putting themselves on camera are the people that I really relate to more and that I know better and have created more relationships like with you. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, uh, I guess I got to start putting myself on camera more. <laughs> so, yeah, you got to get out there. People want to see your face. <laughs> right. So here we are. Um, <laughs> so uh, dive a couple. I've seen you do some interesting things on uh, Instagram, like go out and put like a whole like photo studio out in your backyard or something like that. I don't remember <laughs> what you did. <laughs> and then like fly around. <laughs> so you've done some really interesting stuff and like I feel like those like crazy experiences are what really drive a connection with people through social media because they're doing stuff that's like real like it's not like all this fake things of going out and taking yeah. the perfect picture it's yeah. it's the experience you're you're showing people the experience of actually generating the content and then you get to see the final product too so yeah I think that's really important because it's easy just to look at a picture be like how the heck do they get this like it doesn't look, yeah, it's kind of fake, but it's such a struggle to get most of the stuff. And I mean, as you know, it's like one shot out of thousands and hours of editing and, and it's not, I feel like it just makes the experience more realistic where it's like, we're not just these people that like summit a mountain, like smile, take a picture and then like slide back down. <laughs> like, it's like a lot of hard work. And I think it's more about the journey. It's like the failures. Oh, learning how to use my camera and being in situations where you wish you knew how to use it faster because you have to capture this moment. And a lot of people ask, you know, how they can get better at photography. And I've been doing it for a while now and it's a lot of trial and error and there's no magic, you know, potion for it. It's kind of like, here's some tools to help you, but you really just have to fumble around, figure it out for yourself. And in that you're going to grow and find your own style and kind of grow into your own creative person. Yeah, definitely. Like, I've done so many things where I just, yeah, had to learn from trial and error. And like making videos was hard at first because I had never done it before. But yeah, the more you do it, the more you look at other people's content. And you're like, all right, well, they did this this way, so I can try that. And, exactly. And you you learn by doing, right? Definitely. So, you're also a singer. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that and what what kind of experience you've had with uh, with singing? Um, yeah, so I think most of my life, I just kind of grew up not feeling like I was good at anything. My brother was really talented and charismatic. So I was kind of in his shadows as his younger sister. And I just one day I just decided, you know, I want to be a singer, I want to be good at it. But I was completely tone deaf. People said I should never sing. I was awful. And like, they would just tell me to stop because it was so bad. <laughs> um, but I said, I want to sing. So I'm going to do it. So I joined choir. And I got voice lessons and I practiced and I just put my all into it and I was able to achieve, you know, a voice that 
people actually like to hear <laughs> instead of <laughs> telling me to shut up. <laughs> um, and from that, I just a lot of determination again and hard work and trial and error and putting yourself out there. Like I would put myself out there as a Disney princess for freelance princess parties and I'll sing at this and being in the military, I've been asked to sing the national anthem like hundreds of times and just having that come to fruition where I had this goal and this dream and it actually came true um, through the hard work. Like looking back now, you're like, oh, that was easy. I just sang, but actually remembering the step-by-step process and seeing someone's final product and not knowing where they started is a bad way to compare yourself to, you know, where you are. You kind of have to look at where they started compared to where you are now and see that there's room to grow and to improve and to get better. Yep. And I, I do that myself sometimes. I'm like, I'm 33 now. I'm like, oh, if I had only done this 10 years ago, I would be so far there ahead. And like, yeah. well, you can't say that to yourself because all that stuff that you did got you to this point and all the hard work you put in. Yeah. So it's hard to like hit myself in the butt for that <laughs> just because of that. But I like what you said about, yeah, putting in the hard work. And I am i didn't know that you had never like, I didn't know that you started out not being a singer. I thought you would have that talent from a younger age, but obviously that's not the case. Yeah, so there's hope. I think if people put their minds to it, you can achieve some level of success in whatever you're trying to do. Obviously, there's some like natural talents that people just have, but I think that we can do a lot more than we think we're capable of. Um, like I'm really, I like, I'm not good at math, but I have to take a test for the Air Force to get a pilot slot and a lot of it's math, so... It's like, okay, I'm going to study every day. I'm going to like take time and learn and I can become good at it and not focus on the fact that it's a struggle for me to get there and be like, okay, just separate into pieces, you know, an hour a day. And then slowly see progress, tracking progress, I think is a huge confidence, not forgetting where you started to where you are now. Right. I, absolutely. I think there's a, a lot of people talking about now. It's like, um, I mean, some definitely people are born with like, it's easier for them to maybe play the piano or something like that. But they, nobody started out when they were a baby, like learning, like playing Mozart or whatever. They put in a lot of hard work and effort. And I mean, you weren't born with those capabilities. You learned it from somebody else. So, and that's kind of what I want to see this group becoming. And I've already seen it, but really it was people are in a group now with other people that they can be linked to that have already done something. You're a pilot. Yeah. There's other people now. There's like one other person uh, that I just recently met. He's in the group too as a pilot. Um, and people could come in the group and like look up to you guys and, and you could give them a path like to go yeah. down to like actually get that to happen in their life. Chelsea, yeah. who we had the last call with was uh, a stewardess on a yacht and she taught yoga on yachts. So. Yeah. Super cool to like see different people doing different things, but all people kind of like going after the dreams. Yeah, and it's true. When you see someone doing the thing that you want to do, it makes it more feasible for you. Like, oh, there's actually a path and having mentors and people to talk to and get guidance from and not being afraid to ask. I get asked all the time about how to be a pilot. And so I try to, you know, aid people. I think a lot of people think it's a really competitive world where you just have to push everyone down to be successful. It's like, I can't give out my secrets or else they're going to be as good as me and like that fear. But I think it's just the opposite is true is the more people you lift up, the higher you're going to end up going in the end. That's actually a funny thing. I just, you just made me re- remember was um, Gary V posted this thing on the Gary V show uh, about a week ago. And it was like the abundance mindset matches this guy. He was interviewing called it the vacation theory. And he didn't, he wanted to have all of his friends be successful because otherwise he has to pay for his friends to go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes sense, right? It's like, I want to go on vacation with my friends. I want to have a good life. I want it, but I want everybody else to be able to be there with me too. Yeah, exactly. And there's no reason why there's, there's endless amounts of success in this world. It doesn't mean that just because someone's successful, somebody else can't be successful. Right. I think the more people are successful, the more success there's going to be for other people. It's like, if you just have the wealthiest and then everyone's poor, there's the majority is poor, but if you spread the wealth, have, you know, more abundance of wealth. And I think like what you're doing with this group is bringing together those people and kind of showing that it's okay to share ideas and creating a safe space to 
kind of be vulnerable and be like, I need help with this. Like, how do I do this? Like, I think what you're doing is cool. I think a lot of people are afraid because, you know, like you said, they're not where other people are when they were their age. But it's like, it's never too late to start. It doesn't matter how old you are. And people are actually pretty willing to help if you just ask. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Everybody that I've met over the last couple of years has been very willing to share their time and share their resources. I mean, it's not within reason, like I'm not going to go ask somebody to spend a week with me doing something. But if some, you ask a question to somebody and they're like, yeah, that's a really great idea. Like I can help you go down that path. Like most people are very willing and very open to doing that. Exactly. So um, let's see. I wrote down a couple of things. Um, where, uh, so your goal with piloting, I'm just curious where you want to go with that. I know you want to, you have some larger goal with uh, the military. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I've been enlisted for six years. I'm a staff sergeant currently, and my base flies KC-135s. And my goal is to get a spot, a slot, a KC-135 pilot slot. Um, they do interviews, like, about every six months. And if I can, I guess my dream world would be if I can get a pilot slot as a member of the National Guard, which is part-time. And then on the other side, be doing videography and traveling the world. And as a pilot, you travel the world anyways. That would just be the best. And so that's what I'm positive affirmations towards <laughs> that goal. And just, you just know, like, if you don't put your all into it, you only have yourself to blame. So just trying to get that focus um, to really, like, go down that path and not get distracted by other things that are intriguing. I think sometimes it's important to really put your all into one thing, even though it's tempting to kind of dabble in a lot and I'm guilty of this I have so many passions it's really hard for yep. me to pick one and I kind of like a jack of all trades I can do so many things but I'm not like a master you know you want to be a master or something and then but then you have to give up all the other things so it's really that balance I'm trying to find but thinking if I achieve this then I'll have more freedom to achieve these other things so just keeping that mindset for a second yeah, I think we're all on that same path is like, I am similar to you. I have all these things, the group and then software code or engineering and photography as well. Yeah. And it's really hard to like choose which one. Um, I do think I'm trying to go down the path of what's the most valuable to the world now. So uh, my software, I think, and then creating this group. So I'm kind of trying to narrow the focus a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely a, a challenge every day. It is. You just feel like you're letting go of all these other things that you love. <laughs> and you're like, I could be doing this, <laughs> but it's good to narrow down. And then you kind of see, like with aviation, I still love being creative. And being in the military, people always say, oh, you can't really be creative. You're in the military. They tell you what to do. That doesn't make sense. But I've been able to kind of blend the two. Be like, I, I sing for the military all the time. I'm using my talents. I've drawn pictures. Like, I've used my artistic talents in so many ways in the military that – wouldn't have been there if I allowed myself to shut off um, the other side of me. But I think we're able to combine our passions, you know, if it's something you really want to do and find a commonality and kind of go that way. Yeah. I mean, I love watching your, your photos and your videos from the airplanes. Like that's super awesome. And they're beautiful pictures that it's just combining those two like desires and those two like interests in your life makes a perfect match, I think so. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I liked your little, uh, your challenge to get everybody to send a picture with a heart in it from the sky. That was kind of a cool little challenge yeah, too. That was pretty fun. Like, I like getting people involved and seeing that community aspect of it um, and seeing everyone's creativity and <laughs> what they sent was really cool. <laughs> yep. I think I sent you a picture and then you, you found a picture yeah. or a heart that I didn't even see. Then <laughs> it was like, it was kind of. <laughs> So it creates like a bond that you're like these little challenges things definitely get people to reach out more and stuff. So I think it's a, a great thing. Yeah. And it just kind of makes you more aware of the world around you. You know, you're on a plane ride and you just kind of like, what do I do with my life? But then if you have an intent, you're kind of like, oh, there's a heart. And it just gets you to focus on certain things and just kind of be aware of your surroundings instead of just tuning out. Like I think a lot of us do and kind of go mind numb. Right. Yep, definitely. Um, I well, that, bringing that up is a question. So I want to also give practical knowledge for people. Do you have any other tips and tricks for Instagram that are super easy for people to start doing? Yeah. So my biggest advice, people ask me all the time, how do I grow my Instagram? 
And the first thing I say always is I don't recommend it unless you're really trying to utilize it as a brand or a business because Instagram, I think, is a great way, you know, to connect with friends and connect with family. But the growing side of it can honestly be really hard and you can get really down on yourself. And if you're not in the right mental state, it can actually like warp you pretty bad, I think. Um, so it, as long as you know the risks of diving into this world of Instagram, which has a lot of good, but can also suck you down and kind of drag you down if you let it, then I'd say my number one tip is just engaging with your audience. Create content that you love. You have to create content that you're passionate about because if you don't love it, then why are you doing it? When I went on my right. social media fast, I found myself still making videos and still documenting things with no one to share it to just because I honestly loved it. And so that was kind of validation for me that I'm not just doing this for a following or to be seen. I'm doing it because I just really love sharing the world around me with other people. And so finding something that you're really passionate about so that you'll stick to it. And when it gets hard, you'll remember I'm doing this because blank, because I want to inspire people, because I want to connect with people. And so having that mindset is really helpful. Engaging with your audience is key. Um, finding like-minded individuals finding other Instagram pages that are doing what you're doing similar to reaching out to them sending them messages being like I like your stuff let's collaborate collaborations are a huge way um, to kind of build that and if you're wanting to grow in numbers obviously uh, collaborating with brands is a really big thing I started I think when I had 3,000 followers I just started emailing brands and it was only brands well when I first started doing collaborations I pretty much collabed with anything that would say yes to me <laughs> <And> <laughs> I got, I had a room that was just full of stuff and it was just like from the wall to the ceiling, it was just like full. And I just got overwhelmed and I was thinking, why am I doing this? I don't even, I gave away half the stuff that they gave me and I did more work than it was really worth. And so once you get past that point, you just kind of prioritize what you actually want. Do I want to collaborate just because I want to collaborate or do I want to find um, people that I really believe in and companies that I actually love their message and what they stand for and then promote them because I love what they do and so you just kind of hone in on that and I think the more authentic you are um, the more your followers will see that and honestly it's better to have a thousand followers that all are engaged with you than 20,000 and there's only a thousand people that are engaged with you it's like you want your quality over quantity for sure and I know it's hard because people see a number and they think wow, this must mean this person is really cool. This person is this and this, but it's not true. There's so many ways to get followers on Instagram. You don't know how they got them. Right. <laughs> like you see these huge Instagrams with super low engagement and you know, you're like, okay, this isn't true. And this is just a number. And the number game is only really substantial when you're trying to collaborate with brands because brands like to see numbers. But if you're actually trying to make a difference in the world and connect with a group of people and actually change lives, then I think it's better to focus on the quality of your followers being really engaged um, over how many you can get in a short amount of time. I agree. And yeah, that's a great segue. And like, actually, you being a person as I thought you would be. And the same thing has happened to me where when I was writing blog posts and things like that on Medium, I met some people in my Croatia trip and they're like, we're, you were exactly who I thought you were. Yeah. And I think that's pretty cool because a lot of people are like trying to put up a facade of like, I'm this cool person, but they're not necessarily engaging with their audience in a, in an authentic way. And I think that's an important message to spread to people. Yeah. I mean, the world is so full of fakeness <laughs> that it's pretty right. sad. It's like, we don't really need more of that. And I mean, when I first started, it's easy to get drawn into that. And obviously the comparison game, you're like, wow, they go on so many trips. Wow, they're so pretty. Wow, they always look like this. Um, but that's probably not even real either. These are just snapshots, you know. And so I think having the layer of using the stories and showing your face and telling your struggles. Um, like I had so many plane struggles like these past couple of weeks. And I'm like, being a pilot is hard. <laughs> like, I, like most of the time if people saw me. I'm just studying. That's all I do, really. And then, but when I have those moments and I get those trips and I get those opportunities, I just live them to my fullest advantage. I just soak every moment of them. And so it's just important to know that there's so much more behind the scenes of what people see on people's Instagrams. And I just hope people, like my main goal with mine is I hope people don't look at mine and feel worse about themselves. 
that would be like the most heartbreaking thing. I want people to see what I'm doing and feel uplifted, inspired, or, you know, driven to actually get off their couch and go do something. I love that. That's awesome. Um, actually, that makes me remember a question I wanted to ask you was, you said that there's a lot of ways you can get involved when you have a general aviation license. And you had some very special passengers on this last trip. <laughs> um, I know you had some issues with that trip as well, but could you tell people about that trip and what you were doing? I'd love to. <laughs> so <laughs> when I got my license, I was just so excited. And I just started thinking in ways. I, was, I have this plane. I was blessed, um, like incredibly blessed to have this plane in my life and this license. And I just wanted to utilize it in all the good ways that I could. And I was thinking, how can I use what I have to, you know, better the world in some way and not just make it about me flying like over cool landscapes. And so I was Googling and I found this organization called Pilots and Paws and they are awesome. It's kind of a forum you sign up for. So it's very informal and you put in where you live, how far you're willing to fly. And basically what they do is they take, dogs um, or other furry creatures, <laughs> mostly dogs, um, from kill shelters or out of abusive homes or bad situations. And they enlist the help of volunteer pilots, it's all volunteer, to pick them up from somewhere and fly them to their either new foster home, to a rescue center, or to their new permanent home. And so I was so super excited that one was listed near my airport. And so I signed up for it. And I got my co-pilot to go with me, and we had these three amazing dogs. And I've always loved dogs, but I don't have the capacity to take care of a dog right now because I'm gone so much. But I just have always loved dogs, and I just love their companionship, and they're so loyal and cute. And I just wanted to have that, those good vibes around me. And so being able to just kind of have these three dogs with me in my plane is such a surreal experience, knowing that I was taking them from the shelter that was going to kill them and being able to take them almost to the destination. <laughs> I didn't quite get to the final destination, <laughs> um, but get, but then they finally got to the destination and it's actually kind of fun because being stranded, I mean, I was flying and uh, I had to divert. And so when I landed at this airport and was about to take off, one of my plane parts wasn't working correctly. So I had to stay behind in page Arizona and stranded there for four days but I got to kind of foster these dogs and I bought them some dog food and we stayed at a house with them and I just got to love on them some more. <laughs> but they finally picked up. But it was such a cool experience and seeing how your hard work of like if I hadn't got my pilot's license, I wouldn't have been able to do this trip for them. And maybe they would have died. Maybe someone else would have done it, but you never know. But I'm glad that I was able to. And I actually have another one on the 20th. I'm taking three dogs. Um, to a new home in Idaho. And so I just keep signing up for them and I'm addicted. I think just when you start to feel bad about yourself or you start to feel like comparing or that you're not doing enough, my biggest advice is to volunteer. Like get out there, stop thinking about yourself, think about other people, think about how you can serve. And it's almost an immediate, I think, remedy to feeling bad about yourself when you focus on the needs of others and animals and it just makes me so happy and I'm so happy yeah. I got to do it and I got to keep doing it. <laughs> That's awesome. And yeah, I, I watched the story. And I was like, I'm sorry you're stranded, but it looks like you're having an awesome time with these dogs and, yeah. um, and what you're doing is amazing with that. And it's a way that people can get involved in aviation that they probably didn't even realize before, which I didn't realize. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, um, I don't even know, but I'm like, go do it. Go do it. So good. I promise. <laughs> It's cool. I actually want to ask you another question where, so you got stuck in Page, Arizona for a few days, but it didn't seem like you were having a terrible time there. And I think people like, um, you had probably had an experience that you wouldn't have had otherwise, right? You would have been doing something else. So I think sometimes people like, oh, like this happened and I can't do this, but sometimes it's a blessing in disguise. And you get, you had a time where you got to like spend time with these dogs and go explore Arizona. Um, what do you think about when things like that happen and looking at the bright side of things. Yeah, I think positivity is key, honestly. It's so easy to get, like, being stranded there. Honestly, the moment I realized I was going to be stranded, I wasn't even that upset. I was more thankful that we caught the, pro the problem on the ground. 
and that it was going to get taken care of. And so immediately my, my mind is just, I've trained myself to just kind of jump to the positive because I had times back in high school days, back when I was younger, where I got super depressed and I would just focus on the negative. And sometimes I still fall into that, but I'm uh, doing things like listening to podcasts and listening to TED Talks. And I really just wanted to train my brain to just jump to the positive because I think it's so crucial. Um, and being stranded there, honestly, yeah, you can see it as, oh, I missed my test. Oh, I couldn't do this and I'm blah, blah, blah. But on the flip side, I actually, someone from Instagram like flies there and offered a place to stay. And so I met another person <laughs> randomly in Page, Arizona, the tiniest place <laughs> who follows me and saw my story and offered to help and housed me and my co-pilot and three dogs. And I was, the mechanics there are super friendly. They gave me a discount, a local discount because they felt bad for me. Like all these positives. I was able to go to the lake and just kind of relax and I was able to study and I think you can see anything in life as a negative or a positive and obviously some people's situations are really bad and it's really really hard to see any sort of positive but I think the people that go through the worst things in life would tell you that they wouldn't take it back from anything and that they've grown from it and that they've become stronger and better and because of that experience they're able to help other people and bring people out of their pits of despair when they're going through something hard. So I think every bad situation we're in, there's always a brighter side to it. And so no matter what, you can always find something positive. And I think that's really important to remind people. I love it. Yeah, definitely. And I didn't even realize that it was somebody from Instagram that offered to, to house you, <laughs> but that's attributed to the fact that I believe that most of the people in this world are good and everybody has the desire to have a good life, provide for their family and, and, and give back. And um, that's what I'm hoping to also do with this group is like prove that, hey, the world's a good place. We just have to support each other. Yeah, it's like people are so jaded nowadays, I think, not trusting people. And it's interesting when I was on my social media fast and I just kind of like didn't have my phone with me. I started observing and I would look around if I was in a public area and everyone was staring down at their phones. And for me, I think Instagram, obviously you can connect with all these people and I think it's amazing. But then there's also the thing of connecting with people that are right next to you. <laughs> like, right. You know, if you just looked up and said, Hey, maybe it'd be someone that, you know, you could connect with and they shared a common interest. And I think we're so afraid um, to do that because we just fear being judged. I think Instagram is a great gateway to be like, oh, people are kind and people are nice. And if you're able to meet people off Instagram, just kind of start that way and then branch it out into the world around you and invite people into your space and into your lives. And honestly, the people I've met through Instagram have been the kindest, most generous people ever. And I think with the space, it's a lot of creative people and creative people that love traveling and exploring and sharing. And those are the kind of people that are willing to give and willing to you know, cultivate friendships with people. But it's been amazing just how many people are so willing to give if you just ask them. And I just wish more people would ask. <laughs> I agree. And I'm hoping that we can help uh, spread the message to others. So hence why the live stream's happening right now and we'll see what we can do in the future. I actually think uh, I want to do some events where we like literally take each other's phones away or we give our phones to other people. So you can't yeah. actually <laughs> interact with your own phone for the entire event. We'll see how yeah. it goes. But I, I think, think that's perfect. Yeah. So that actually could be kind of fun. You take, take each other's phones, you can still take pictures with it, but then it's not your own phone. So you can't interact. Yeah. Cause it's, we kind of so. use it as a blanket sometimes a shield where we don't have to express ourselves. We don't have to like make eye contact and that's so bad, like just hiding behind, you know, the screen. And that's why, I mean, it's hard when you're pro social media, but you also have to warn people against it. And just as with anything like moderation, like I love dark chocolate, but I, I ate it all the time. <laughs> that wouldn't be very good. <laughs> so use it for its, you know, positivity and for its good things. And then when you start to feel those negative feelings, just cut it off have a screen time amount. Yep. Okay, I'm only going to use it for two hours. I'm going to only be on there when I have something positive to say, when I want to reach out to a friend and tell them they're doing a good job. Um, and then when I start to feel jealous, I'm just going to shut it off and go do something else like yoga or meditation. Yep. Yeah, actually, I'm, I have a question. How, how did that uh, 
social media hiatus go? Uh, were you like wanting to post more or do, were you okay with it? I, it's, it's hard for people to actually give up their phones and their social media now. So I think it's yeah. important for what you did. Honestly, it was a little embarrassing. I didn't realize how attached I was. It's like, it was hard <laughs> like the first day yeah. because for me, I use social media more than just to scroll, you know, and it's, I made all these friendships. And so I feel like cutting that off. I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm cutting off from all these people and everyone's going to forget who I am. And like, <laughs> Part of me is like someone's gonna hack my social media. I'm gonna have to start from the beginning. <laughs> like all of these first world issues that I was just right. you know freaking out about, but also the loneliness of having these people that I actually connect with, you know, that group. And so I kind of compartmentalized how I was feeling. Okay, having those friendships are the good thing of social media. Feeling like I'm worthless without it, or feeling like lonely, or like itching to like those addictive feelings. You know, where you're like, oh, I have to grab my phone, but like, why do I have to grab it? You know. Right. So I just it kind of made me more cognizant of okay when I'm using social media use it for those good things that I intend to use it for um but don't waste time like I just put out a video about time because that's what I was thinking about while I was gone and just like the value of our time and how easy it is to waste it just I mean if you're on social media for longer than you need to be you're wasting time get on there connect with your friends send out a good post do this and then turn it off. They're still going to be there later. <laughs> Go do right. something else. Um, but yeah, it was pretty eye-opening for me. And getting it back, it was like, I was a little more excited than I think I should have been. <laughs> to <get it> back. <laughs> right. But I think, I think it's important for people to have things taken away from them. So they realize, you know, how much they appreciate it, for what reasons, and then kind of try to get rid of the negative things and try to just be a better person from that experience. Yeah, I love that. That's great. I'm going to do my own social media hiatus when I'm on the Nomad cruise soon because oh, yeah. there is no internet. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's a great, kind of <laughs> it's, it's kind of like force, but it's, uh, I don't, some people buy internet and stuff. I try to take that time and be away from social media. So, because the yeah. only time we really have to have it. Um, let's see. What else could I ask you? Um, <laughs> well, The military ring again? Hang on one second. My dad's okay. talking to me. One second. Okay. I'm up. I, I'm there. Okay. Sorry about that. Right. <laughs> there, he's calling me for dinner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not a bad thing. Enjoying uh, like not. enjoying life at my parents' house for this past. Uh, couple weeks before I head off to Barcelona. It must be fun, though, to be able to reconnect with them. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I used to not be able to come home. Uh, but really, people don't realize as you can, once you kind of take control of your life, you have more freedom, you can do more, like, yeah. you can spend more time with your family, and you can do other things that you didn't get to do before, so. Exactly. Um, what other... So we talked about your KC 130 goal. Um, what are the other goals do you have that you're trying to work on in the next year? Just curious. Um, yeah, main goal is get that pilot slot. Um, okay. Build my, I guess, my videography capabilities. Like just keep getting better at video. Um, being able to tell stories through that. Reach more people. Um, if I say grow my social media, I mean like, grow how many people I'm able to reach and connect with not so much a number but more so a community right um well I have a, I, that's I I wanted to ask you about that too being a, a female pilot um is it more of a challenge what's that say that again I think you broke up for a second can you hear me can you hear me <laughs> there we go um, what, uh, what challenges are you going through, if any, uh, about p becoming a female pilot for the KC-130? I'm just curious because I think uh, you're a big inspiration for other female pilots out there. Yeah, so, I mean, being a pilot is hard enough, but then also being a girl has different stigmas attached to it. Um, for the most part, everyone's really supportive, all the guys. I mean, it's mainly guys that are in this field, obviously. Yep. For the most part, they're all very supportive. I'm really appreciative of that. 
but I've, I've come across scenarios where, you know, my job to play where no way you're a pilot. Oh, there's no way you're in the military. Um, you're too blonde. You're too girly. You're too all this. Um, and the just kind of feel honestly being like, well, I am. <laughs> and <laughs> if you have that much time to worry about what I'm doing, then you have too much time on your hands and you need to be doing something more productive. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so I like being, you know, I like being a minority in the sense because I think it gives other girls, you know, hope that they can do it too. And I personally look up to my commanders that are female and to other female pilots that I see that are flying fighter jets or flying the tankers like I want to fly. I think women helping women is such a beautiful thing and it's really rare, but I think it's getting better. Um, But I think we just have this like fear that if another girl is doing good, then you're not going to do as good or you're not going to get picked but like we were talking about earlier that if you just lift each other up then everyone's going to be lifted up around you just like I met this my one friend Amelia from Instagram and she's a pilot and I think she's the coolest person ever and seeing her life and everything she gets to do I decided you know I'm not jealous of this I'm inspired you know she can do this that means I can do it too and any like fears I had I can put aside and I think it's just that chain effect of having these female role models and looking up to them and choosing to feel inspired by it. And that's great. And you're sharing your story at the same time. So it's really, uh, really helpful. I think for other people, I've seen a couple other um, female pilot uh, Instagrams out there. And, and I think it's, it's great to get more females in aviation. I'm trying to get more females actually in programming too. uh, my, my field, but um, I think it's important, especially right now in the society we're in. (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> yes. It's cool. Like it's nice to see like how guys are so supportive and I want this narrative that men are trying to squish, you know, women down to go away because that's not my been my experience. I think that's a really old mindset and it's obviously still there, but I don't want people to focus on that. I want them to focus on the guys that are actually supporting and uplifting these women because that's what I see every day with the guys I work with on my base, they're like my family and I trust them and I love them more than anything. And they tease me and they pick at me, but like, I just know, you know, they support me in the end and they're proud of me. And I think girls can trust guys and guys can trust girls. Like it can be an equality thing and not, not one gender has to be better than the other or stronger or cooler, you know? Exactly. So very cool. Um, well, I'm going to end pretty much on that note. Uh, cause I think that's a great, uh, <laughs> Great way to end the thing. How would people find you? I'm just curious and share with that how everybody can find you. Well, you can find me on Facebook as Savannah Rasky. Um, just message me if you friend me because sometimes <laughs> it's hard to sort through. <laughs> yep. And then the Savvy Traveler on Instagram, the Savvy Traveler on YouTube. It's pretty much where I live. <laughs> awesome. And uh, we had a couple people watching. So thank you guys for being here. Um, and this will go out and be shared in the group. So, and uh, I'm excited that you're part of it. And it's uh, and excited that we finally met in person too. So, yeah, thanks for inviting me. Thanks for cool. posting all this. Like, I've seen how much work you put into curating all these things and creating this content. I'm like, wow, he's really going to get things going. And I think it's awesome because it's not easy to, you know, start something like this and put yourself out there. But I'm proud of you. <laughs> It's definitely not easy. Um, one person, I'm going to put it on the screen. Melissa just waved. And um, Melissa is our next interview coming up too. And she has created an app for herself. So definitely oh, wow. women supporting women, I think is important. So That's awesome. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you for that. And I um, want to if you have any ideas, anybody else in the group has any ideas for how this can become uh, a big thing. Eventually I want to do a conference as well so we can all get together and be in yeah. one, one place. But for That'd now, <laughs> what's that? That'd be so fun. Yeah. I definitely love to go skiing out in Utah. I've never, uh, never been out there. So it'd be fun. Yeah, come out. I'll take you up in the plane. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun. All right. Well, you have a good day and a night and I will talk to you soon. All right. See ya. All right. Bye.